Okay, welcome to another online English tutorial. Today we're going to be uh, learning two games that you can use in the classroom. The first one is called Pictionary and this one is, again with these games, they're usually good for teaching vocabulary. Um, the second game actually works very well for doing a classroom review. Anyway, Pictionary and the previous game, Hangman, are good for teaching vocabulary. Um, so it, you'll need something very important, which is the Pictionary uh, word generator. So if you go on randomwordgenerator.com forward slash pictionary.php, see if I just put it here, that's not what I wanted. Microsoft. All right, never mind. Um, so that is the address there. Maybe if I just put it in quotes like this and then copy it. Yes, that's better. So I'll just pop that on the screen so you can see it. So you've got randomwordgenerator.com forward slash pictionary.php. Let's get rid of that. And the way that your board setup works is very simple. You'll just have uh, the side of the board here, you can do two columns, one with the letter for your name, so this is C for Chris, that's me, and then we'll just put S for student over here, and you can use that to keep track of the points. Now, you're going to use your phone with the Pictionary word generator to show the student a word, but you're not going to look at that word, obviously. You don't want to see that word, otherwise it ruins the game. And you can see on the website here, you can choose different levels. You can choose easy, medium, hard, or really hard. And this depends on the student's level, but most students, you'll probably want easy or medium. Um, even, sometimes the medium words can be quite difficult. So let's look at a few examples. So medium, we've got tissue. A lot of students would not know what a tissue is. Easy, you've got everyday items. Uh, okay, so dream, very easy to draw. A lot of students will know this, but some of the easy words. So if you show them a word, you you ask, do you know what it is? Um, and if they know it, then they can draw it. Now, the other thing you want to be looking at, for the youngest students, it doesn't matter um, about the time. They really can take as much time as they need. It's not that important to introduce this rule. But for older students or students who are better at playing this game, you need to time the round and say you have one minute to draw this thing. And I have one minute to guess what it is. Um, so in total, one minute. They're drawing and you're guessing. Just one minute. And um, you can use the classroom timer at the top there to keep track of the time. So you just wait until the timer is at a, a number that you remember. So when the timer gets to like uh, 15 minutes and 15 seconds, you just remember, okay, the timer was at 15 seconds. So you, you wait until it gets to 15, you go three, two, one. Okay, it's at 15 seconds. Now we just wait until it gets to 15 seconds again, and that's your one minute. So you can use the classroom timer to time the rounds. Um, and they have one minute to draw this word. So when you're showing them the word, that can be tricky because it's quite small and you have to get the camera to focus and you have to press this button to make a new word without looking at your phone. So sometimes you won't hit it properly. Um, so you have to look away when you press this because you want them to see the word, but you don't want to, um, you don't want to know the word yourself. And this is a very fun game. Sometimes if they say, I don't know that word, then you look at the word and you say, okay, the word was worm. So you don't know the word worm. That's fine. You don't know the word worm. And then you just teach them. Before you move on and change the word, just teach them what a worm is. It's great when 
you find words that they don't know because then you can just teach them right there and then what a worm is. Okay, so that's the first game, Pictionary. The next game, let's get rid of all of this stuff. The next game, it doesn't really have a name. I kind of invented it. Um, so what I usually do is I start with... Uh, let's do purple for the lines. I start with a planet over here. It's probably Earth. It's got some continents. If you've got time or if you're quick enough, you can uh, give it a bit of color just so it makes it very clear what it is. It's good. To, it's a good idea to label your drawings as well so that uh, students can learn the spelling or what the word looks like. So you say, this is Earth, and we're going on a journey. We're going on a journey to another planet. So you just draw this path like this, and it can go all sorts of ways, and it goes to another planet. Um, so really, it depends how much time you want to use as to how long this path is going to be. So you could do a very short path if you only want to use a short amount of time. You could do a long path. So I usually do quite a long path because it doesn't really matter if they finish or not. Um, so then you just divide it up like this. And of course, you've got another planet at the end there. So just do something, I don't know, it looks like the moon or something like that. Uh, da, da, da. That is terrible. Okay, so there's another planet, and we're going all the way there, we're going through space, and but along the way, there are things that can either hurt you or help you. So if you land on a star, that is a very good thing. If you land on a bomb, that's a very bad thing. So you can use stars, you can use bombs. Sometimes I change the bombs to aliens. So it's like, oh no, you've met an alien and now you have to go back. So uh, the bombs, I usually do them in red. So very simple, you just draw them like this so that it's quick. Um, if you're really trying to save time, you can get the student to help you to draw this. They could draw in the bombs, you could draw in the stars. Um, if once they know how the game works, um, but they'll probably do a very bad job at, at drawing those in. Okay, and uh, now we are going to want dice. So we're going to start on Earth. If you want, you can draw a little uh, rocket ship for them and say, okay, here's your ship, and it's going to be taking off and going... Uh, to the moon or wherever. You could even use this game to teach planets, which I have done on several occasions, and you can say, which planet do you want to go to? And you can bring up a picture of the planets in our solar system and ask them, do you want to go to Saturn? Do you want to go to Mercury? Do you want to go to Venus? Um, just as an opportunity to teach something else. Um, okay, and then... What we're going to need is we're going to need a dice. So there are lots of apps that do this. And again, you're going to need something on your phone because you're going to need to show it to the student. Um, and I use one called Dice. It's called Dice. It's a very imaginative name. Pretty blurry there. Um, so if you just look for something like that in whatever app store you're using, I'm sure you'll, there, there are lots of things that'll do, if not the same as this, a very similar thing. So this one is cool because you can shake it like this 
and it has its own physics and it rolls around and uh, that is what we'll use to advance the progression on the board. So you can ask the student to choose their favorite color and then if they roll a two, they go one, two, stop there. If they roll a three next, then they go one, two, three. Oh no, they land on a bomb. So what happens now? Well, they have to go back to the nearest kind of checkpoint. So you could do this how you want. You could say, oh no, you have to go all the way back to Earth. Or you could say you have to go back to the last star. Um, just something like that. The bomb is bad. It means you have to go back. Or you could say you have to go back three spaces. Something like that. Um, and then uh, if they get to a star, well, that means that they can jump to the next star. The star is like a teleportation. So they can go all the way over. And yes, I do make those sound effects to the next star. Um, and then, uh, OK, so how is this teaching them English? Well, uh, in order to roll the dice, they have to answer your question. They're not allowed to roll the dice until they answer your question correctly. But of course, it doesn't really matter if they answer correctly or not. You're going to let them roll the dice anyway. You can correct them and then let them roll the dice. Um, but the idea is that they have to get this right. Otherwise, they can't roll the dice. Um, and you can just ask questions reviewing stuff that you've been learning. So if you've been learning about colors, ask them color questions. If you've been learning about animals, ask them animal questions. It's a really great opportunity to review and recap and even explore some uh, additional things like uh, what's the opposite. You could teach them the word opposite by saying what's the opposite of big and then give them a few examples. So with this game, you'll often go off onto another board and just start teaching them stuff and then come back to the game once you've learned that because they're much more motivated to learn what you're teaching them because they want to keep playing this game. Um, okay, so it's basically that's basically how it goes. Um, let's call it the planets game. Oh, but uh, it doesn't have to be planets. Sometimes uh, I will do like the start of the game is a uh, forest. You've got some trees over here, and then you're going to you're going from the forest to the city. You're going to the big city, and you can get them to name a city. They're going to Beijing, or if you've been studying cities, you can get them to choose a city. Um, and then you can say that maybe along the way, instead of bombs, you could say there's wolves. Um, and instead of uh, stars, maybe they find some fruit to eat along the way, something like that. So yeah, it doesn't have to be planets, uh, forest and city, um, use your imagination, get creative. So that is it. Those are the two games. Goodbye. Thank you and goodbye.